All right, welcome back for another round of painting of the week. For those of you who have sent me requests, I am not like completely neglecting or like ignoring your requests. I just have a bit of a lineup that I want to get through um, before I get to those. So look for your, your paintings soon in, in some upcoming videos. But this week we're going to be looking at another painting from the French artist Edouard Manet. His Bar at the Folie Bergère, which is an 1882 oil on canvas painting. This was really Manet's last major painting. Um, the Folie Bergère was a, a Paris nightclub. You can actually still visit uh, visit it today in Paris if you, if you want to. It was a bar scene, <laughs> um, kind of similar to the scene that we actually would, uh, saw a few weeks ago in uh, the toulouse lautrec painting at the Moulin Rouge. Same kind of atmosphere. These bars or clubs were, were really the sinusures of, of nightlife for the Parisian upper middle class, and also, of course, for tourists who, who would have been visiting Paris, they featured a, really a, a huge variety of uh, different forms of entertainment, apres bouffes, apretas, um, different types of shows and musical performances, even things as spectacular as acrobatics. And if you uh, direct your eyes to the upper left-hand corner of the canvas, we can actually see a pair of legs and uh, some green-shoed feet hanging down. And it's a trapeze artist. And these kinds of things actually would have happened. You actually would have had um, acrobatics going on above, above the people who were who were sitting down at the tables, and there were other things going on too. Um, typically, they would have kind of multiple shows going on simultaneously. So it's very exciting. There were a lot of things that were going on, and these were very popular attractions, um, as I said, for the kind of Parisian upper middle class. This painting is extraordinarily complex, and it's a painting that I never really fully appreciated until I began to look more specifically at a lot of the details. In fact, this is probably the most widely analyzed paintings, um, with the exception maybe of Diego Velasquez's Las Meninas, which I don't believe we've looked at yet, and we'll probably get to that in the coming weeks. And this painting is specifically apropos for analyses that pertain to gender conventions and also commodification. And I'm not going to get into that a lot because I get kind of annoyed when um, art textbooks go on kind of ad nauseum about, you know, uh, analyzing paintings in the context of communism and commodification and gender roles because that stuff is just kind of done to death. So I'm going to try to shy away from that a little and look more at just sort of a descriptive analysis of this painting rather than a critical analysis. Um, and the big thing, of course, is this mirror. This woman is standing in front of a very large mirror, and the majority of what we see in this canvas is actually just reflection. Um, the, the mirror ends, if you look kind of right above the, the barmaid's right arm, kind of where that gold band is that goes around her, uh, her forearm. Just below that, you can kind of see the gold trim that denotes the edge of the mirror, and everything above that is just a reflection. So we have this giant mirror... Uh, behind this bar, and we can kind of imagine us as the viewer walking up to to the bar, maybe to, to order a glass of wine or or some uh, sort of drink. And if you look at the placement, specifically of these wine bottles, the the champagne bottles with the gold foil, where there's a uh, a red bottle there, maybe some kind of rosé, a bottle of beer. Um, the placement of these bottles, both on the actual bar in reality and the reflection in the mirror, leads us to believe that this mirror is just a, a flat mirror that runs behind the bar. But there's something interesting about these bottles. Notice, when we look at these bottles in reality, and by reality I mean not the reflection, I mean the actual physical bottles, they're right on kind of the inner edge of the bar, right by the barmaid's hand. So we would expect that in the reflection, the bottles would be uh, very close to the edge of the bar, on the edge closest to the viewer, but they're not, they're on the opposite side of the bar, which doesn't make any sense, right? If, if I hold an object very close up to a mirror and its reflection, it also appears to be close to the mirror. And an object held very far away from a mirror appears to be far away from the mirror and its reflection, but that's not what we're seeing at all with the bottles. In reality, they're close to the mirror, but in the reflection, they appear to be far away from the mirror. So there's something weird going on here. And also, the barmaid, her reflection is completely wrong. If this is a flat mirror, we should see her reflection should be directly behind her, but it's not. It's way off to the right-hand side. And her posture also seems a little bit different. She, she appears to maybe be leaning forward a little bit more, right? Where in reality, she's, she's more straight. And these kinds of inconsistencies were really criticized by the French art critics when this was first publicly displayed in the 1882 Salon. 
Um, and they were thought to just simply be mistakes. Uh, but modern art historians typically doubt that Manet would have actually committed such artistically egregious errors. Um, another question that comes up is this mustached man that we see over on the right-hand side of the canvas who's wearing a top hat. Who the heck is this guy, right? Is he us? I mean, he's, he's directly facing the woman, right? I mean, if we take that to be the reflection of the barmaid and she's directly facing this man, we see in reality, not in a reflection, but in her actual physical corporeal existence, she's facing us. So does that mean that, that we're the man in the mustache? I mean, what's, what other explanation could there be? But what I want to propose here, and this is an analysis that's been um, espoused by a lot of different art historians and critics and commentators, is that this painting actually represents two distinct different moments in time. So this woman in the past was engaging with this kind of top hat mustachian man, and now that's over, and now she's looking at us. Two completely different moments in time that are juxtaposed in a single canvas, which is a very interesting idea if you think about it. But what I want to talk more about specifically is the relationship between this woman and this mustached man, and the relationship between us as the viewer. Notice how close she is to the man in the top hat. As I said, she appears to be leaning forward more in a reflection. There doesn't appear to be much distance between her and the man in the top hat. And everything, her posture and the man's face itself, is sort of indicative of this uh, engagement, this conversation, a certain intimacy, actually, in their association, which is completely absent from her current stature in reality. She feels very distant from the viewer. You feel like there's a lot of distance between you and her, where there appears to be almost no distance at all between her and the man. So you have this man in the top hat approaching the bar either to buy a drink um, or maybe... To, to kind of purchase her <laughs> as a commodity, which would not have been unheard of um, in these types of nightclubs in Paris at this time. But either way, you've got this sort of uh, intimate relationship between this man and this woman that Manet has established. And now we look at her in reality, in this moment in time, and there's this sort of emptiness in her face. She almost looks sad. And that sort of intimacy is completely gone. So what is Manet doing here? He's playing with distortion. He's playing with perspective and vision, and this idea of vision, of looking, is a key aspect of Impressionism, and that's something that I know I've talked about before, and I'm going to continue to push it whenever we look at Impressionist paintings. Vision is always key. But there's also this, and I said I wasn't going to get into this, and I'm not, but I'm going to mention it at least, there's this idea that the mirror does not represent truth, and specifically in the context of feminism, this idea that a woman is more than her reflection. Her image or her representation in society is an incomplete and an inaccurate attempt to capture the true essence of womanhood, the true essence of her being. 